Now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns, present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King! On! Huskies! Gold. Gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. With Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog Yukon King as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Man, oh man, what a treat it is to dive into a heaping bowl full of Quaker puffed rice or Quaker puffed wheat topped with milk or cream and your favorite fruit. Mmm, what a breakfast. Say, these king size, ready to serve premium grains of wheat or rice are shot from guns. Yes, actually exploded up to eight times normal size to make them crisp and tender, bigger and better tasting. Tomorrow, sure, get off to a flying start with this breakfast treat. Quaker puff rice or Quaker puff wheat. It was early in the afternoon as Sergeant Preston drove into Beaver City, but the light had already begun to fail. Still, the sergeant could see a group of men standing in front of Dr. Matthews' cabin on the main street. Looking! What's the matter, Joe? Doc's got a man in there. Badly wounded. Shot? Yeah. Accident? We don't know. His dogs brought him in. He was lying on the sled unconscious. I'll see if there's anything I can do. Come on, King. Who's that? Sergeant Preston. Come in. Glad to see you, Sergeant. Hello, Doc. Still unconscious? Yes. I've done all I can for him. His pulse is regular now, though. He's be coming around a little while. Any idea who he is? I never saw him before. No identification at all? Well, there's a name on his knapsack. Huh? The boys brought it in with him. It's over there by the door. I see. Where was he hit? In the chest. I've extracted the bullet. What was it? Forty-five. No powder burns on the parker. Fired from some distance. Tom Warren. What's that? It's the name on the knapsack, Tom Warren. I've heard that name before. Uh, no. He's opening his eyes. Yes. No. Are you all right to ask him a few questions? Sure, as I do. Good. Oh, Who are you? I'm Doc Matthews, and this is Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted. What's your name? Uh, I'm Tom Warren. What happened? Well, that's what we'd like you to tell us. You belong to the force, Doc said. That's right. Wait, it's coming back. Who shot you? I, I want to think, remember. How do I get it straight? Take your time. You ever hear of Jake Danton? No, I haven't. Doc? Not me. Well, he's a killer from Chicago. I guess he thought he was safe up here. Maybe he would have been if I hadn't met him on the trail. A friend of yours? No, but... But I knew him. Is he wanted for murder in the States? He's wanted for more than one. What happened on the trail? We met. He was heading north. I was heading south. I recognized him right away, and I tried to pass him. I, I, I did pass him. Then I looked back. He saw my face, and he took out his gun and shot. I, I don't remember much after that. Nothing. Nothing, really. That's easily understood, but I should be able to pick up this man's trail. Where'd the shooting take place? I just crossed the Klondike. I was on the overland trail of Beaver City. I was going on to Barnaby Creek. Well, how far up the ridge were you? Oh, about halfway. The trail was steep. I just rounded a bend. Oh, yes, I know the place. Now, uh, what does Danton look like? Well, something like me. But younger and huskier. Not much like a killer. But don't let that fool you. You better shoot first and ask questions afterward. That isn't the way the Northwest Mounted does things. I'm warning you. All right, thanks. One king. Oh, wait. What is it? There's, there's something more. 
I fired a shot myself. Maybe I hit him. You're not sure? No, I, I'd already been hit. But if my shot didn't go wild, maybe you'll find him lying beside the trail. I hope so, for your sake, Sergeant. King will lead me to him, wherever he is. Let's go, boy. Without stopping for rest or food, the sergeant started out from Beaver City. And although the dogs made good time over the hard-packed trail, it was nearly nine o'clock before they reached the point where the shooting had taken place. Okay. Oh, you oh. The moon and the northern lights made the night brilliant, and the sergeant was able to examine the ground thoroughly. The bloodstains in the snow told their own story. This is where Warren was hit, King. Now we'll see if his shot did any damage. There was a cliff wall on the left-hand side of the trail and a steep slope on the right. Fifty yards far on, King broke away from his master's side and ran down the slope to a broad ledge. What's down there, boy? All right, I'm coming. On the ledge below, the sergeant found another and a larger bloodstain on the trampled snow. So Danton was hit, and he rolled down from the trail, landed here. He must have been badly wounded, but he climbed up the slope to the trail again. They're going after him, King. <laughs> Moments later, the sluice lead. He picked up the scent of the wounded man's team and followed it down the ridge to the Klondike River. Then, without any command from his master, he swung to the west on its frozen surface and headed in the direction of Dawson. Go on, boy. Let's hope we catch him before he reaches town. It was shortly after midnight that Claire Tremaine left her cabin in Dawson and started for the Monte Carlo where she sang. She saw a dog beam heading down the street toward her. The man who was driving was standing on the runners, but he was grasping the G-pole with one hand and his body was slumped far over the bar at the rear of the sled. Claire was startled and ran out into the center of the street. dog stopped at her command and she hurried to the man's side and helped him into her cabin. Claire washed and bandaged the scalp wound. But when she had finished, the man's strength seemed to return and he tried to rise. But the girl pushed him gently back. Now, now, you better take it easy for a while, mister. What happened, anyway? Uh, I don't know. Were you in a gunfight? I think I killed a man. What's that? I was lying in the snow I... I got up, and he was up on the trail above me. He was driving away with my team. I shot him. I heard him yell, but the team kept on going. Then I climbed up to the trail and took the team that was left. Look, I don't want to get mixed up in any killing, but you've been wounded yourself, you know. Mm. Did this man who stole your team shoot you first? Oh, I, I don't remember. You don't remember? What's your name? I don't remember. I don't remember anything except that I've killed a man. Now, now, wait a minute. Let's see if you have any papers in your pocket. I don't know. Yes, here's some letters. Jake Danton, is that your name? Jake Danton? I've heard it before, I think. Well, I guess that's you. Any idea where you live? No. Then I'll have to read your mail. Just General Delivery Dawson on this envelope. Uh, read the letter. All right. What? what does it say? I'm going to forget all about it. Why? What does it say? It's from a friend of yours in Chicago. Evidently, you've done some killing before tonight. Uh, have I? If you're Jake Danton, you're wanted for murder in the States. What I ought to do is go straight to the Northwest Mounted and bring them back here. Uh, I guess so. A killer. I don't feel like a killer. I thought tonight was the first time. I hoped he wasn't dead. I only wanted to stop him. You don't look like a killer, mister. Where are you going? Police? I don't know. I don't believe in kicking a man when he's down, but... I sure wish I wasn't so soft-hearted. You've been kind, yeah, now what am I mixed up in? I don't want to make any trouble for you. <laughs> ah, that settles it. Are you, you're going for the police? No, no, I'm not. I don't know what it proves, except that I like your face. Maybe whatever you did, you had a good reason for doing it. If, if you did, well, I'll, I'll give you a break anyway. You can stay here until you feel better. 
Just go to sleep. I'll put your team around and back before I go to the Monte Carlo. The Monte Carlo. That's a cafe, isn't it? You work there? I sing there. What's your name? Claire. Claire Tremaine. How do you happen to remember the Monte Carlo? I don't know. You'll probably remember a lot more after you get over the effects of that bullet. I hope you don't have to remember anything too bad, mister. It was two hours later, after Claire had finished her numbers and was talking with Tex Richards, the owner of the Monte Carlo, that Sergeant Preston walked into the cafe. Good evening, Tex. Hello, Claire. Hello, Sergeant. Sit down and join us. No, thanks. I want you to do a little detective work for me, Tex. Uh, sure, as long as you're not after any of my friends. Oh, not tonight. <laughs> I'm looking for a man about six feet tall, rather dark, young and husky. But the best identification is that he's been wounded. King and I trailed him into Dawson, and King lost the scent of his team after we hit town. Anyone mention seeing a wounded man this Excuse evening? Excuse me. Ever... Have you, Claire? Oh, no. It's late, though. I must be getting home. Why, of course. I'll well, see you tomorrow, Claire. Yeah. Good night. Good night. Well, I'll tell you, Sergeant, nobody said anything to me. But if a man was wounded, he'd probably go straight to a doctor. That is, if he's going to... Claire hurried back to her cabin. Jake! What? You've got to leave Dawson. Tonight? Yes, right away. Sergeant Preston's looking for you. Uh, where will I go? I thought of that. Barnaby Creek. It's a new strike. You go through Beaver City. Here, I'll draw you a map. You'll get into trouble helping me. That can't be helped. There's no sense talking about it. Just hurry. We'll continue our story in just a moment. I wonder if we're going to have a visitor today. Well, sure enough. Hello there. Hi, pal. Say, you the fellow in charge here? Well, uh... Glad to meet you. Name's Scoop. Star reporter. That's me. That's a pleasure, Scoop. What can we do for you? Well, sir, just looking around. Never tell where you'll run into a live wire story. Ah, maybe we can fix you up right here. For instance, how about a story on breakfast? Breakfast? You kidding? No. Ever heard of Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat? Sure, pal. Everybody's heard about them. They're shot from guns. Well, Scoop, did you ever taste anything better? Boy, Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat just melt in your mouth. Make breakfast a real treat. Confidentially, pal, I never tried them. What? Oh, look, Scoop, you don't know what you're missing. H here, try some now. Here's a bowl full of Quaker puffed wheat. Even got milk and sugar on them. Just taste those luscious king-sized golden grains. Man, oh man, they're exploded up to eight times normal size to, to make them crisp and tender. Mmm, not bad. Huh. In fact, they're terrific. You bet. And Quaker puff rice tastes just as swell, too. Wow, where has Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice been all my life? What a story. Gotta write this one up fast. Thanks, pal. So long. <laughs> well, sir, fellas and girls... I'll bet it's no news to you. I mean that for a swell-tasting breakfast, you can't be Quaker Puff Rice or Quaker Puff Wheat. The ready-to-serve breakfast cereals shot from guns. And what's good news, too, is that wheat or rice shot from guns is good for you. Furnishes added food values of restored natural-grade amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. So be sure to keep a supply of both delicious kinds on hand at all times. Remember, wheat or rice shot from guns is never sold in bags or bulk. Look for the famous big red and blue package with the smiling Quaker man on the front. That way, you're sure to get the original, the one and only, Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. Now to continue our story. The morning after the night Claire Tremaine helped the wounded man escape, she noticed some blood stains on the floor of her cabin. They were dried, and she decided to scrub them away at once. She had hardly started, though, when she heard a dog barking outside. And a moment later, there was a knock at the door. Who's there? Wait a minute. Good morning, Claire. Good morning, Sergeant. What do you want? King seems to want to come in. Do you mind? No, I, I'm honored. All right, King. Do 
just passing your place when he started barking. He ran to your door and started scratching at it. Yeah, I heard him. And now he's sniffing the floor. Oh, you've been washing it. Yes. If you don't mind, I'll take a look. Yes, boy, I see some spots. What made them, Claire? I don't know. Do you want me to make a guess? I only noticed them this morning. But they were made last night. I didn't say that. No, but you'd better tell me the truth. King and I have been looking for the man we followed into town ever since you saw us last night. King knows we're still on the trail, and now he knows we've found it again. Are you insinuating that that man has been here? Are you trying to say I'm that I... am remembering your face when I described him to Tex. I'm remembering the way you ran out of the Monte Carlo. Yes, Claire, I believe he was here. Well, you can't prove it. Why'd you give him shelter? He was wounded. I... Oh. All right. I did take him in. Simply because he was wounded? Yes. You'd never seen him before? No, and I didn't ask questions until I bandaged his head. I'd have done the same for anyone. But you did ask questions eventually. He couldn't tell me much. He'd lost his memory completely. So that's it. Anyway, he's gone now, and I don't care what you do to me. I won't tell you where. Wait a minute. I think you will. No, Sergeant. You helped him escape because you liked him. That's my business. Just why do you think I'm following him? Because you think he's a killer. All right, now listen. I wish you'd waited a few minutes more at the Monte Carlo and heard the whole story. You mean he isn't a killer? He wouldn't be running away from anyone if he hadn't lost his memory. What? Doc Matthews is treating a wounded man over in Beaver City. That man told me his name was Tom Warren, but he lied to me. I don't see what that... Now, wait. As soon as I arrived here last night, I went to headquarters. I made a report on this Tom Warren and said that I was after the man who had shot him. The inspector was extremely interested because he knows Tom Warren well. And he reminded me of something that happened here last summer while I was at St. Michael. <laughs> yes, King, you were here too, weren't you, boy? It was you and Tom Warren who saved the inspector's little girl from drowning. And you and Tom became good friends afterwards, didn't you, fella? I still don't see King that. doesn't forget a friend, Claire. And he didn't even recognize that man in Beaver City. That puzzled me. So I asked the inspector for a complete description of Tom Warren. The man in Beaver City did not fit it. For instance, Tom Warren has a scar on his right hand. What? The man who was here had one? Yes. Mm. But he also had letters in his pocket addressed to Jake Danton. Mm -hmm. Now look, Claire, tell me where he's gone. I'll send someone to bring him back here where he can get some treatment. I thought you... Where are you going? Pick up the man in Beaver City for a little more questioning. But Beaver City, that's where Tom's gone. You mean that? At least through there. He's heading for Barnaby Creek. One King. You're going after him? Yes. The man in Beaver City is Jake Danton. And he tried to kill Tom Warren once. He may try it again. Let's go, boy. In Beaver City, shortly after noon that day, the man who called himself Tom Warren felt strong enough to take a walk. The doctor gave his permission, and he strolled down the street to the largest cafe. The bartender greeted him. Hello there, Warren. You feeling better? A lot. Have a drink. I guess it won't do me any harm. Here you are. <laughs> I think I'll take it to one of those tables in the back and sit down. Yeah. Hey, you better take it easy. <laughs> there was a heavy bearded prospector sitting at the corner table. Hey, sit here with me, partner. Oh, thanks. I will. The uh, bartender called you Warren, Jake. Yeah, Blackie. And I've got a knapsack full of papers to prove that's who I am. So you caught up with him? Yeah. He's dead? I don't know. What do you mean? What happened? I shot him and he fell off his sled and rolled down a slope at the side of the trail. Why didn't you make sure he was dead? I thought he was. Well, you should have... Quiet. Here comes a bartender. Hey, Warren. Warren, if somebody just walked in, I think you'd better take a look at him. Where? Hunched over the bar down there by the door. What about him? He's been wounded. Got a bandage around his head. Yeah? He's in a bad way. I couldn't get anything out of him. Said his name was Smith. Just a second. I'll see if I know him. I figured he might be the man who shot you. You told the doc you fired back at him. What? Yeah. That's him, all right. That's Jake Denton. Come on. I got my gun ready. Up with your hands, mister. What? Step up, Warren. You ever see this man before, mister? Yes. I didn't kill you. I'm glad. Glad, huh? You admit you're Jake Denton? You'll try to deny it. Oh, no, I won't deny it. What? I'm too tired. I can't go anymore. 
You admit you're wanted for murder? Look, I can't remember anything before yesterday. Maybe I am. I don't care. Or we care, mister. We don't like it much to have a killer running around loose. That's right. We're going to lock you up till the law gets you. Now, wait a minute. Where? There's a tool shed out in back. Good, strong padlock on it. He'll be safe there. That's a good idea. Come on. Give me a hand with him, boys. Come on. Wait, Blackie. Stay here. (laughs) Talk about bricks. You don't remember anything. Spotting you at the roadhouse, starting out with Dawson, report you to the Mount of Police. He don't even know who he is. He may remember before long. Huh? And then what? I don't want the police to pick him up. I want him to die now while everybody thinks he's Jake Danton. But there's no chance. Yes, there is. He's going to be killed trying to escape. Oh. Tonight, Blackie. And we're going to help him. Up to a point. <laughs> yeah. Come on. We'll take a look at the shed and the lock on it. It was shortly after dark that Sergeant Preston arrived in Beaver City and called out to his team to stop in front of Doc Matthews' cabin. Looking! Yes, King, you can come in with me. Let's make sure my gun's ready, boy. Hello, Doc. Hello, Sergeant. Come in. Where's your patient? You mean Warren? No, I mean the man you treated. Well, he's gone down to the cafe, but his name is Warren. No, Doc. It's a little confusing, but take my word for it that Warren is Danton, and Danton is Warren. What are you talking about, Sergeant? Just the way I said it. One I treated as a killer, and the one they locked up this afternoon isn't? What's that? Well, yes, he wandered into the cafe, Sergeant. He admitted that he was Danton. Joe searched him and found some letters addressed to Danton. He doesn't know who he is. Where is he? Uh, the tool shed is back at the cafe. Thanks, Doc. Hey, hey, I'm going with you. You'll have to hurry. I've got my parker. Lead the way. At that moment, Blackie, with Jake standing beside him, had succeeded in forcing the lock on the tool shed door. Yeah, that does it. All right, open up. Come on, Danton. Get out of there quick. What do you want? Don't ask questions. Just hurry up. This is your chance to make a getaway. But you're the man I shot. What of it? Why should you help me? Because I'm willing to let bygones be bygones. There's no time to waste, man. Somebody may come out the back door of the cafe any minute. Yeah, where will I go? You'll see a clump of trees. Head to the left of them and you'll hit the trail. Come on, hurry. All right, all right. Uh, you'll see the locks been broken. We'll take care of that after you're underway. Uh, around here. Yeah. See? There's a team. Watch supplies. Plenty on board. There's the trees. Oh, I see them. The trails to the left. Go to it, then. Uh, okay, thanks. Up, boys! Watch! As Tom urged his team across the snow-covered ground toward the clump of trees, Sergeant Preston drove around the corner of the cafe building. King was working as a loose lead. He recognized the man who was driving away, and he started after him. Hey, where are you going? King flashed by the tool shed, but then he stopped short. There were two men standing in the shadows. One of them had a rifle raised. He was about to shoot King's friend, and the great dog, without any thought of danger for himself, raced toward the man. The man's finger was squeezing the trigger as King leaped. Look out, Blackie! Oh, get this dog off me! He belongs to the sergeant. Uh, Give me that rifle. Oh, pull him off! I gotta get Tom. Oh, no. I'll pull the dog off as soon as I can shoot Tom. But as Jake started to reach for the rifle lying in the snow, King turned his attention to him. Oh, no! Help! And the sergeant came running around the corner of the tool shed. That's enough, King. I've got him covered. Oh. You're under arrest, Danton. I'm not Danton. That's Danton getting away. Lying won't help you anymore. That man's Tom Warren. Stop him, King! Go on, boy! At his master's command, King bounded after his friend. He reached his size. He was nearing the trail, and he barked a joyful greeting. But the man didn't seem to understand. Get away! Get away from here! King remembered his master's command. His friend must be stopped. He didn't want to hurt him, so he leaped at his parka, grasping at his teeth and tugged. Let go! Let go of me! Tom pulled his parka loose, and King realized that friend or no friend, he must do his duty. With ease of long practice, King threw his weight against the man and knocked him from the sled. Tom felt himself falling. He hit the ground hard, and blackness descended on him. Tom didn't know how long he was unconscious. As a matter of fact, it was nearly ten minutes. But when he opened his eyes, he saw an elderly man kneeling at his side, a tall man standing beside him. He looked down and saw...